one, first of all, new camera, so that's already a plus. Yes. And new editing software, so let me know what you think of those two. Uh, and top of that, last video was about time management. This video, I'm gonna actually make about how to stay motivated because one of you commented on how to stay motivated and how exactly I go about staying motivated and how Megan goes about staying motivated. Me Megan's one of my classmates here. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. So let's get started. So um, the way this is gonna work is Megan is gonna list like the top three causes why I or I mean on a, almost any student feels unmotivated and then I will provide some sort of like way that I address it. Megan's gonna also provide some insights into how she addresses it. So what is what is one reason why people feel unmotivated? Do you think? Okay, the first one is just feeling overwhelmed. There's so much to do. There's so much information that they're just throwing at you. And also at this point in your life, you have so many chores, outside responsibilities. You have to start being like a functional human being. So, how do you how do you address this? I think this is hard. Um, mm -hmm. I feel overwhelmed all the time, and I get to the point where I have so many things to do that I actually don't do any of them. Mm -hmm. I'm sure many of you are in that situation. Mm -hmm. One way that I've found to combat that is to just attack each activity head on. And what I mean by that is focus on one activity and when you're focusing on it, forget about everything else. Don't let that influence you. Because sometimes if you have so many things, you'll work on one thing, but you'll be like, I'm so stressed out, I can't even focus on this one thing. No, you have to focus on that one thing and then move on to the next thing and then move on to the next thing. Another important point here is that you have to triage. So triaging is a term that medicine or medical people use in the ER. And that's basically like you want to treat the patients that need the most help first. That's called triaging. And you can apply that to your to-do list because you want to do the things that are most urgent first. <laughs> and I know that sometimes people hate doing that. Like, I don't want to work on that paper that's due tomorrow because I've been putting it off for so long. You got to work on the paper that's due tomorrow. Just because oftentimes the way you will get around this like anxiety is to address the thing that's causing the anxiety first. So you want to attack it head on. Um, and the, the thing that goes along with this is this thing called the 80-20 rule. The 80-20 the rule applies to a lot of things in life. Like, oftentimes if you take a test, 80% of the test will be based on 20% of the material. Like, 80% of the world's wealth is approximately with 20% of the wealthiest people in the world. And this can apply to your to-do list because the things that will require the most amount of your time, 80% of your time will go to 20% of your to-do list. So focus on that 20%. Focus on the one that will require the most time because that's often the part that matters the most. Um, and that's just kind of how I attack it. Mm -hmm. You want to add anything? The only way across the problem is through, or like through it. Yeah. Only way across a bridge is to go through it. Uh, no, 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 the only way to get over a problem is to go through it. You know, that's you can't, good... you can't avoid. <laughs> yeah, look at this girl <laughs> with the and with the, the inspirational quotes. I like it. Okay, good. Another way to overcome the feeling of feeling overwhelmed and feeling unmotivated is to go to the people you trust most. And for me, that's my parents. So oftentimes, even when I don't know what I'm feeling or if I'm overwhelmed, I will call my mom and be like, "Here's how I feel," and she'd be like, "That's fine. It's because of A, B, and C." And it's weird because I think it's because my parents know me better than I know myself sometimes and so it's important to have people like that in your life who even when you lose this sense of purpose or even when you feel unmotivated when you feel overwhelmed they're the ones that kind of like root you down and tell you like here's why you're feeling the way you are and it's okay to be feeling that way whether that's a close friend family whoever it is make sure you have those types of people in your life uh, second problem is nothing seems really applicable right now you know like um, in our career, we're just like kind of feeling lost. You don't really know like what fits in where and what you really want. So how do you address that? I'll tell you this right now, even as a medical student, I still have no idea what I want to do. You know, like I think getting into med school helps because you know you're going to go to medicine, but it still doesn't help with the fact that I have no idea what I do want to do. I have no, I still kind of struggle with the sense of purpose. And I think that's another thing that many of you guys in high school and college still struggle with, which is like, why am I taking this class when I, when I don't even know if it's going to come in handy for med school? Why am I taking this? Uh, because I don't think it's going to be useful. And I think the quote here, there are two quotes, one that Megan told me and one that Steve Jobs told me. <laughs> Not in person, just I heard it. Steve Jobs said that you can never connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect the dots looking backwards. And what that means is you have to have some sort of faith that whatever it is that you are doing right now, as useless as it might seem, has some sense of purpose that it will add to your future. And one of the examples that I give about this is, um, you know, if I, if I had not sat in on like a particular class, maybe I would not have ever gotten interested in science, right? If I didn't take maybe like this boring class, maybe I would have never been interested in something like this. So I think the general consensus here is to keep an open mind and to embrace everything and to know that even if it doesn't seem like it's going to be useful now, you never know what effect it's going to have in the future. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, someone recently told me um, about the whole feeling lost thing. It's okay to be lost, you know? You're gonna be trying to figure out what you wanna do for the rest of your life, and that's just what life is. And I thought that was very, very, spoke <laughs> to me very <laughs> strongly. I think that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, anyone who claims to know exactly what their life is gonna be like, literally they're faking it or they're too naive. Because <laughs> some of us, some of us think our, li our lives will have this linear trajectory, you know, like by the time I'm 50, I'm gonna have a Nobel Laureate medal and I'm gonna be in the NBA and I'm gonna have two kids. Like having like that trajectory is good, but you will be so, you, you know it's not gonna end up like that. Like four years ago, I did not know I'd be sitting here. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know I was gonna go to medical school. I'm sure four years ago, you didn't know exactly Exactly what we were gonna do mm -hmm. and you kind of have to like live with what comes and one part of that is being okay with some of these things that you think might not be useful because mm -hmm. sometimes they will be some of our classmates they're like humanities majors right they didn't even know they wanted to do medicine and then they decided to do medicine and then they realized that humanities background actually fostered their interests in like the humanitarian side of medicine and so I'm like that's really interesting because if you hadn't done humanities you would have never been exposed to that mm -hmm. so it's just kind of like you can't connect the dots looking forward you can only connect them looking back, so kind of have faith that things will work out. So something I also heard about today was uh, when we did this guided meditation talking about um, how all of us are just waiting for like the rainy days to pass so we can have a clear sunny day. Yeah. But really, if we think about it, like the sunny days are now, you know? Yeah. Like what you're doing right now, you're already so blessed to have. Yeah. So just keep going through it and just appreciate um, the fact that you get to learn. Third thing, this is something I struggle with a lot, is just staying focused. How do you sit down for more than like 20 minutes without, you know, checking your phone or Facebook or being distracted? What do you do? Well, we made, <laughs> Megan, this, Megan actually has a problem with this, and I actually have a problem with this too, and I actually had to seek an active solution out because I realized I would be studying, and I would be so motivated, I was like, I'm gonna get so much stuff done today, and then like 20 minutes in on my computer, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Snapchat, I'm like, how's Instagram doing? So, um, the way I got around this was this thing called the Pomodoro Technique, which I've been using for about like a month or so now. And the Pomodoro Technique is you work for 25 minutes, you get a five minute break. You repeat that four times and then you get a 25 minute break. Um, and the, this, is, this was something that I made Megan do yesterday because I was like, Megan, you're not doing any work and you're on your phone like literally all the time. And she's like, yeah, but I don't know how to stop. And I'm like, okay, let's try this thing, which I just found out, it's called the Pomodoro Technique. So I made her sit down and uh, how did it work for you? It worked. Fantastic. It was started 10 p.m. went until like 5 a.m. And I will say like middle of the night is the perfect time. There are no distractions. You text someone, they don't text you back. They're asleep. There's no Facebook <laughs> updates, you know? So I think that was definitely something that really helps me just buckle down. We studied for like three hours, 40 minutes almost total yeah. when I added it all up, which is crazy, right? Three hours and 40 minutes of like hardcore studying out yeah. of those five hours or six hours, mm -hmm. which is great because even in the times that we got breaks, mm -hmm. we did stuff to kind of just keep us involved. Like I, I washed the dishes, we <laughs> ate some dessert. We just kind of like hung out for a little bit watch some videos, but the point is, have 25 minutes of very hard, intense focus and then five minutes of a break. Mm -hmm. And the psychological reasoning behind why I think this works is because it combines short-term rewards with long-term rewards. So short-term rewards is every 25 minutes you get a five minute break and it's just enough to keep you motivated. Mm -hmm. But after four of those sessions, you get a 25 minute break, which is like <laughs> the thing that like kind of kept us going yesterday. We're like, oh my God, this is our fourth one. We get like a really long break after this. <laughs> and it actually worked like a charm. I, I was very like impressed um, and um, it personally was great. Anything else you want to add? Okay, well I have one small thing I want to add, and this is just my pet peeve, which is um, a lot of you will message me saying I think much of the stuff I'm learning is useless, I don't know why it's, why am I learning this, and this kind of goes back to the first point, but it also goes back to the point of appreciating the material. Um, one of my biggest teachers from high school used to always say like, learn for the sake of learning, and what I mean by that is don't just learn because you have to get a grade, don't just learn because you have to memorize the formulas, learn because you actually enjoy the material, and if you don't enjoy it, make yourself enjoy it. I promise you every aspect of science is fascinating enough that if you look into it, you will enjoy it. And if you don't, I'd be very surprised because you're trying to go into medicine or free health, right? Like you should, you should have some sort of fascination for science or something that ignites you. Um, and I promise that really does help. And one thing that is really true is sometimes we take the knowledge we're getting for granted. Right? Like we're getting all this knowledge that's going to eventually save millions and millions of lives, not just individually, just like on a holistic level. And sometimes we just think it's like, why do we have so much to learn? And we're lucky because some of that knowledge is literally being fed to us. We could have had to figure out that knowledge. We could have had to be like Mendel and like just literally discover genetics, but we don't <laughs> because people have set this system up and people have made so many discoveries that we're fortunate enough to like learn most of the stuff we need 
from textbooks instead of having to figure it out. Mm -hmm. You guys may already know this, like 30 years ago, or maybe even 100 years ago, the biggest cause of disease was infectious disease. AKA, you could die from the flu, you could die from pneumonia, you could die from like random particles that affect your body. Many people often like would die right away when they got these diseases, and many people still die today from them, but it's not as significant as before because we have these things called antibiotics. Who discovered antibiotics? Alexander Fleming did. And he did this in like around the 1950s. And he, all, he discovered them. All we have to do as medical students is learn how to use them, and we can effectively save lives. So, to, you know, it's really like humbling to know that all we're being fed is all of this knowledge that like our predecessors have created for us, and we just have to learn it. We don't actually have to do the burden of discovering it. And um, I think that is one thing that often motivates me because I'm like, wow, like all of this stuff is already figured out for me. All I have to do is learn it. And when I learn it, I'm gonna be able to save lives and be a hero. Uh, and that's pretty nice to know. So yeah, anything else? Good. All right, well, uh, thank you guys for watching this video. Drop a like, comment, share, subscribe. If there were strategies that I didn't mention that you guys use that help you out, feel free to mention them below. But aside from that, I'll see you guys hopefully in the next video. Uh, and uh, let me know what you think of the camera quality and the editing because <laughs> I, I take pride in this. Uh, but yeah, see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Peace.